This is a tragic story of the NFL's most forgotten yet most severe case of CTE ever recorded. This is also perhaps ever more amounted to the fact that the NFL has continually not supported the idea of researching CTE until later after this man's death. Born and raised in the small town of Oskaloosa, Iowa, Tyler Sash excelled in football and basketball in high school, where he became a talented athlete while also smashing books and All-American honors in two different sports while playing for his high school team. Being a true Iowan, he chose to stay home as he dreamed of as a kid and attended college at the University of Iowa where he became a Hawkeye. And he also shined on the field, recording a total of 109 total tackles, one sack and an average interception rate of 30.2 while playing at Iowa from 2008 to 2010. By 2011, he got drafted to the New York Giants with several injuries prescribed on prescription pain medication for other injuries that he had in high school, college, and in the pros. And he had a total of three concussions up to this point with his third in the NFC Championship. He, however, continued to help the team on defense and carried the Giants to win the Super Bowl in Indianapolis versus the New England Patriots in 2012. While making him a community community superstar, something much darker was lying inside of him. By 2013, he had recorded five concussions, had constant injuries, two severe injuries, the Giants let Sash go. By that time, he was already living a comfortable life with his daughter and his wife in Iowa. When he came back home to start his new life, he would hesitate to tell his family about his inner demons. His wife reported that he was constantly googling tips on how to deal with a head concussion. He also was forgetting things like keys and wallets. And his family started seeing him drift slowly away from reality. He was arrested once in 2014 after being released from the NFL for public intoxication where he was restrained and then tasered after leaving his motorcycle which brought up new red flags as to how his life was spiraling down even more. Tragically, this is how the story of Tyler Sash begins to end because his demons would later catch up. On September 7th, 2015, the night before his passing, his mother found Sash sleeping in his family couch in his home in Iowa. But little did she know, by the time he was taking a nap, he subsequently was gone from this planet. The next day, he passed away from an accidental overdose as later investigated by police and autopsy reports. And when his brain was donated to science to help other athletes that were going through CTE, at a research center, they found that he had equally or worse CTE as former NFL star Junior Seau, who also died from one of the worst cases of CTE ever recorded by an NFL player. In the end, this is an emotional story because... I asked the Lord, if my son hadn't have played football, would he still have died on that day? I love football. I'm not trying to ruin football for anyone. It's so much a part of the culture of America. My son went the football route. He could have played basketball. It wouldn't have cost him his life. <laughs>